Living in the digital age, a multitude of businesses, companies and individuals are looking for videos for a range of different needs and are also willing to pay for them. And that's where Filmmaker comes in. But how do you find the work and how do you secure a video production job? Welcome to the Film Look and episode one of the Video Production Guide. If you're looking for stylish transitions for your video, then check out Stanza by Rocketstock. You'll be cutting from scene to scene like a pro. Link in the video description. So, you're an aspiring filmmaker, you have a DSLR, a microphone and some lights, and you want to earn some cash by using your skills and equipment to make videos for clients. How do you start? At first you may need to work for free to gain experience before people will pay you. We had to do this at the start and we would advise that you treat this time as a testing ground to see if making videos for other people is a career path you want to go down. Everyone needs videos making, so contact your local museums, artists, events, people getting married, vets, dentists, even make a video for your nan sewing group if you have to. Once you have a few projects under your belt, you can create a showreel to showcase your work. Treat your showreel the same way you would a CV or a resume. Show the best shots and don't make it longer than one minute. You want it to be entertaining and it's better to have a snappy one minute video than a boring three minute one. I'm not going to go into the specifics of setting up a business, that's a whole guide in itself, but I am going to talk about some ways you can set up a video production company. First you need to pick a name that you want to trade under. Our production company is called RGR Film Productions. Choose a title which is self-explanatory. RGR Film Productions is pretty clear that we produce films. RGR Visual Designs could be any sort of creative design business. It's a bit wishy-washy and vague, so pick something with video or film in the title so your client will know exactly what you do. And spend a little bit of time choosing the name because it's going to be with you for a long time. Once you have a name chosen, you should create a Facebook business page and then eventually a website. This will help people find you and it's also a place to showcase your work. Get Instagram and Twitter as well, but only if you're going to use them. Seeing a dormant Twitter feed that hasn't been used in 6 months is a lot worse than not having one. There are a lot of inexpensive ways to build a website, so don't stress about it. WordPress and Squarespace will allow you to create something visual really easy, which is something you should be aiming for. And some advice, don't have a lot of text on your website. Your work is visual, show it off. We're not sponsored by Squarespace, but there's loads of other channels that are, so go find those discount codes. Keep your branding consistent on your website, social media pages, and even your business cards. If you have no experience in graphic design, there are lots of people out there that can help, some just starting out like you. Trade services if you can. Business cards are a dime a dozen, and a great way to stand out is to have something that's a little bit different from the norm. These were my first business cards and they worked, but after a few years, I changed them to these. They're a lot more visual and they give a good first impression of what we do. Whilst you're setting up your business, you need to be out there searching for work, and at the start, don't expect anyone to come searching for you. Emailing people can work, but make sure you're emailing the right person. Don't use the first email address you find on a company's website. You need to be speaking to someone who works in the marketing or advertising departments. These are the people that deal with people like you. An easy search on Google for marketing department will give you the names of the people who work in that department. This is a little different for people who run businesses who are one or two man teams. A great way to contact them directly is by messaging them via their Facebook business pages. Write this message in the same professional manner you would the email. Don't be disheartened if you send 100 emails and only get 10 back. 10 is good. But if you only get one email back from someone who is interested, the next step is to meet with them and to see how you can work with each other. Even if this is an unpaid job, treat it like a job interview. Go smart, be prepared and listen to what they want. And most of all, be honest. Don't pretend to know something you don't. Nobody becomes David Fincher overnight and you shouldn't pretend to be. Other than that, it's up to you to turn it into a sale. The more people you speak to, the more work you will get. So get to know people, referrals or how you're going to get 50% if not more of your work. This means networking and telling people what you do. I hear networking, but it's necessary. The trick is, go, listen to people and see if you can sell your services. If you can't, they might know someone who needs them. Last piece of advice will depend on where you live. If there are a lot of art groups, community meetings and talks, go to them and introduce yourself. You will meet people who are very like-minded, creative and someone there will be organising some form of event or workshop and that's where you can offer to film it for them. It's a start. So, who needs videos making? Well, the short answer is everyone. For this guide, we've created two different examples of client videos. The two types of videos we created were for Pomplamoose Recording Studios. The first one was a 20 second advertisement about the services they offer. The second video was two minutes long and goes into more detail about Jordan, the owner of Pomplamoose Recording Studios, and we call these types of videos business stories. If a band wanted just an engineer to, to sort of record them, I'll do that. It's kind of like it just whatever suits the, the client's need really. Recording Studios are just one example of the types of companies you can contact 
but there's loads of others, so let's talk about them. Museums. Our first client was working for a museum, filming artists create art out of glass, then interviewing them about their work. These jobs taught us how to work with a client, finding out what they need, how to shoot interviews with many different people, and how to turn videos around quickly. Corporate videos. Corporate videos come in many different shapes and sizes. We've already spoken about business stories and service-based promotional videos, but you also have fundraising videos, factory tours, and high concept videos which have a more of a film-like structure and tone to them. Music videos. From my experience, if you make music videos, just advertise that you make music videos. It's a lot easier for a local band to find you as they don't need to look through all of your other work that you've created. Music videos are a great way to just concentrate on the visual story as the sound has already been recorded for you. Events. Event videos come into many different categories like local organized events, music festivals, nightclub videos, and corporate conference events that are not the most interesting, but you can turn them around quickly. Weddings. Filming weddings can pay well and it's a good way to get used to working fast and thinking on your feet, which will hurt after the shooting days as they will be long and the editing days will be even longer. Just like music videos, if you're going to shoot weddings, it might be best to separate your main production company from the wedding side. A bride does not need to see how well you can shoot a corporate video, they need to see how well you can capture their special day. If a business comes along and says yes they want a video making, or you find out there's an opportunity to apply for a video production project, you need to write something that's called a proposal. A proposal is a formal document that outlines the approach of how you will make the video for them. In this document you will outline the concept, visual style of the video, the schedule and the cost of the project. In the description below you can find a word template that we use to write our proposals with some examples of what you have to write in each section. You'll win some jobs and you'll lose some. And it sounds silly to say but if you don't get the job, don't worry about it. Failing to get the job is a learning experience, so send them an email and just be honest about getting feedback to help you learn. They might give you some advice which helps you get the next job, and if you do get the job, congratulations. The last piece of advice I'd like to give you is this. Most people go into making client videos to help fund their short films, but a lot of people have lost sight of why they picked up a camera in the first place and have turned more into a businessman than a filmmaker. Yes, the money can be good, but never lose sight of why you picked up a camera and use the money that you've made telling other people's stories to tell yours. Thanks to Rocket Sock for sponsoring this video. With over 200 exclusive transitions, their pack stanza can get your video looking great too. Check it out by visiting rocketstock.com or via the link in the description. If you have any questions about this stage about making videos for other people, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching the film look and remember, achieve it one shot at a time.